Namaste. I welcome you all to the 78th session of Guru Bodha. We have our guest today who specializes in marma therapy, acupuncture, dawn therapy, etc. Welcome, Dr. Joseph. Uh, this Guru Bodha session 78th is brought to you by easyarveda.com and I dedicate this and all of my works at the holy feet of Dr. H. Chandrasekhar Rupa. This class is made live available for Easy Ayurveda weekly class subscribers. If you have not subscribed, please go to easyarveda.com slash video classes. You will get 350 previous classes and you will get opportunity to participate in the sessions like this. And the guest today is Dr. Joseph Casey. He runs Nithyadara Mate Ayurveda Hospital in Bale, Honnur, Karnataka. And with him, we have launched a course on Marma therapy. And in this course, uh, Dr. Joseph speaks about introduction and history of marma therapy, detailed marma points of the legs and lower back, practical demonstrations and how it is useful and say disc rape, varicose veins, PCOS, knee joint pains and so on and so forth. Uh, and how uh, acupuncture, dawn therapy, etc. can be amalgamated with marma therapy. The video course involves a uh, practical demonstration on a live patient and uh, also the theory part, everything is explained, the scientific attitude. So that is available uh, here, easyarvada.com slash marma-1. So he, he is a clinician and uh, recently he started up a big hospital at Bale Honor. He is courageous, whatever he learns, he implements. Once he had visited our college where he was giving demo to our student. Our student requested me to request the principal to cancel all the classes. They said, let Dr. Joseph continue his session. So that is the magic he had created while giving the demos of uh, marma therapies and quick healing therapies. He and Nadi. So he is even good at Nadi and many therapies which Dr. Uh, Heber mentioned. So today he will be here uh, speaking about uh, the marma therapy. So marmas are some points in the body, some structures in the body, some organs in the body some tissues in the body they may range from a small point to a bigger area like there may be a point on the muscle we call it as a mamsa marma there is a point on the bone we call it as a asti marma likewise the heart as an entity as a whole organ is also called as a marma the navel region is also called as a marma the kidneys are called as urinary bladder is called as marma the brain is called as marma so an organ a structure a tissue a point so it can be anything, marma. What is this marma? Marma is a point which has life energy in it. You can call just without remote control. We cannot switch on the television and run the channels. So here are the energy transmitters, energy stores and energy transmitters. In Ayurveda, we call it as prana. So they behold prana in them. They transmit prana. So these are the vital centers which energize us. And uh, Master Sushruta in Sushruta Samhita, has contributed an entire chapter for Marma Vignana, which covers 107 marmas or the vital points or the vital organs scattered all through our body in Sushruta Chari Rastana. And coming to Sushruta, uh, coming to Acharya Charaka and Vagbata, they have also mentioned all the treatises have mentioned about marma. They mainly mentioned three marmas. Ach uh, Acharya Charaka tells that among all the marmas, three marmas are important. That also means to tell that Acharya Charaka also had accepted that there are more than three marmas. He tells among all the marmas, three are important. So the numerology differs. The gross things have been explained by Charaka and Vagbata and Sushruta himself being an anatomist and also a surgeon. So he mentions each and every marma in detail. Where those marmas are located? What is that marma composed of? What happens if that particular marma is injured? So based on the structures, we have five different types of marma. There are mamsa marmas, which are made up of predominantly that place is made up of uh, the marma site is made up of muscles. Sira, it is made up of blood vessels. Nayu, it is made up of ligaments and tendons. Asti, it is made up of bones. This marma stana, asti marma is enriched with bones and sandhi that uh, is enriched with the, the bony joints. So these depending on the structure and depending on the injury, they have been classified again into different types. These marmas are scattered, 107 marmas are scattered throughout our body. Some are present in the limbs, upper limb and lower limb. Each limb has 11 marmas, totally 11 into 4, 44 marmas in two upper limbs and two lower limbs. Some marmas are present in the middle portion of the body that is uh, thorax and abdomen the trunk and the remainder of uh, the marmas are present in the jatpurva that is neck and head so like this 107 marmas are scattered everywhere and based on the effect of injury 
they are classified into sadhya pranahara marma which means when this marma is injured the sadhya pranahara marmas are injured they may cause almost immediate death almost immediate death death of an organ death of a system or death of an individual kalantara pranahara marma these are the marmas which when are injured will also take away the life but it may take a month or so to take away the life the life span is expanded giving the time a, a physician a window period where he can still protect the patient like that we also have vishalagna marma where uh, a foreign material like an arrow or a bullet is pierced into we would have watched this in movies like an arrow has gone into the body or a bullet has gone into the body the doctors are trying to remove that unsuccessfully they remove it and the patient dies so if this bullet or an injury or uh, an arrow the foreign body has gone into a marma that vishalagna marma that area and when we try to remove that the prana or the life energy escapes once the arrow is removed once the bullet is removed from like a bullet is stuck in the heart when i remove the bullet from the heart that is a marma suddenly the prana life energy which is there escapes through that opening it is said and then the person will face death we shall like that so there are also instances where the foreign object may fall off all by itself and there may be spontaneous healing for that the person should be lucky enough to survive and then comes the vaikalyakara marmas so which causes limping and also deformities of the structures of the body and rujakara marmas which cause immense pain so one thing common about uh, this marmas friends is the uh, life energy which is present in them life energy the prana prana again is made up of so many factors so like uh, the prana uh, is uh, made up of soma maruta and teja see the components of uh, a marma any marma has prana and that prana can be in the form of soma so that is uh, a moon energy or a water energy maruta an air energy teja the fire energy or the sun energy sattva raja and tama the faculties of mind what we can call it as pancha mahabhutas five basic elements of nature and finally atma atma that is the life principle or the atman we call it as the uh, soul all these things are present so when a marma is injured what can happen one of these elements can get damaged or hampered or imbalanced the elements com uh, comprising of prana so depending on how many prana elements are uh, affected the effect will be so much dangerous and irreversible so the effect of marma will be immediate death constant or gradual death when you remove a foreign object it may lead to death some marmas when injured are painful as i said the rajakara and some are vaikalyakara they form deformities of the body and very importantly sushruta mentions the knowledge of marma is half the knowledge of surgical knowledge the knowledge of marma is half the knowledge of surgical science that shows that how important it is for a surgeon or a physician to know the marma mainly sushruta has emphasized the knowledge of marma to see that while doing a surgery these spots should not be damaged by the physician so surgeon the surgeon should have a precise knowledge half the knowledge of surgery is the knowledge of marma that is very important so that shows that if you don't know marma you cannot become a good surgeon so even for physicians it is very important to know those marma spots where they are in the body so basically i have said in my intro that when these marmas are injured they may cause so many bad effects on the other hand these marmas when manipulated they can be healed the problems arising in those areas can be healed so here there are marma points which when manipulated in a different way can injure and cause damage and harm to the person and at the same time the same marmas when handled in a different way can repour the energy into those marma places and then resuscitate those organs or structures or cells or whatever it is there and provide a healing effect so this sushruta's concept of marma and the marma vijnana has been carried ahead by the later modern physicians and they have developed some therapies to manipulate these marma places or the marma spots to pour in the energy to pour in the prana if the prana so these are the points where prana is connected 107 areas where prana or the life force is connected so when the life force has been reduced so the manipulations or the work of the marma therapist is to manipulate those points with medicines or with some some maneuvers which our dr joseph will be telling in the next part of our conversation and to see that the prana or the life force is regenerated resuscitated rebooted 
in those places and at the same time we also can handle them and also heal those uh, problems which are caused due to the damage of those particular marma so having given this uh, small introduction about what exactly is marma what is its composition and how marma damage can cause many problems and how marma healing can reverse those problems to an extent with limitations of course that we will discuss i would like to just end my introduction with this uh, there is a question on this composition that question says soma martha and teja themselves uh, a combination of the panchama bhutas so Absolutely. they are listed separately in the marma composition any reason for it like why panchama bhutas are mentioned separately yeah okay so soma martha and teja are themselves a combination of the panchama bhuta see soma probably here uh, the acharya is uh, uh, just looking at uh, to tell soma actually means chandra so that is uh, the moon energy okay maruta so that is uh, air energy teja that is fire energy they are almost similar to like loka purusha same if we are seeing so they are almost similar to what is there in the panchama bhuta prithvi ap teja vayu akasha so among that uh, up that is the water component is there so it is enriched with the soma energy so and then the fire energy will be equal to teja and maruta so probably here to tell that the prana or uh, the life energy is so enormous there so much enormous so one of the concepts of marma is this marma points are rich sources of prana rich sources to show the enrichment probably so here uh, we can see in the medi- uh, medicine combination also uh, like uh, pre- while preparing some medications like trifala is uh, mentioned so like haritaki vibhitaki amalaki is mentioned in the preparation of some medicine again towards the end like trifala kalka or trifala or something is mentioned once again so this is probably to show the fortification that it is needed in that particular preparation so to enrich the properties of a particular preparation here also i am not sure again why uh, acharya might have mentioned after mentioning soma maruta and teja pancha mahabhutas uh, why they have mentioned soma maruta and teja probably indicate the grosser elements and pancha mahabhuta when we mention mahabhuta they are the subtle elements which are forming the grosser things uh, in the creation i feel so the subtle and also the grosser manifestations of the same things have been repeated to show the enrichment of uh, uh, the marma with the prana energy pancha mahabhutas also have individually prithvi ap teja vayu akasha every component has a prana energy again here we are telling soma is there so that is having maruta teja and the combination of all these things which i have mentioned sattva raja tama and also atma the combination of all these things will form the uh, marma in each and every marma these components will be present in permutations and combinations again let us take for example some marmas are predominant in agni mahabhuta some pred, uh, some marmas are pred, predominant so like sadyo pranahara marma example as i mentioned the marmas which take away the life immediately in sadya pranahara marma the agni is more in comparison to the other uh, elements so like that when we go through the composition of each and every marma we can see that they are formed by different mahabhutas again according to the rule vapadeshis to buesa all marmas are formed by pancha mahabhuta but there will be predominance of one or the other mahabhuta so the, to get a clarification about those things to play with the permutations and combinations of these pranas in each and every marma so probably the author has uh, mentioned all these elements in spite of it looks like a repetition so probably there is some logic in that also so these are my uh, just uh, thoughts about why they are uh, they are explained uh, again after soma martha and teja have been mentioned why pancha mahaputas are explained uh, uh, once again but these definitely form uh, the uh, combinations there. soma is just water or can we take it as combination of earth and water yes uh, th- that is the idea behind it so it can be taken as earth and water along with kapha dosha and there is a question on can ligament tear in the knee be healed with marma therapy it is a it's a good question one thing that to note here is that as much as the marma therapy is uh, has become famous it it also has limitations as akin to any any of the health sciences that we deal with including ayurveda or allopathy or homeopathy or whatever so if that ligament tear is complete then probably it, it will not help but but if it is if just there are the just wear and tear and if there are if the patient has severe pain or if there is stiffness or if there is some blockage in these conditions uh, mar- marma therapy would come into 
picture uh, raghuram sir do you have anything to add to that uh see i am not an expertise of uh, marma therapy but definitely there will be some limitations i suppose okay so ligament tear is anatomical ligament tear is see a ligament injury and ligament tear are two different things i'm not sure about if uh, ligament tear can be uh, manipulated through the marma techniques i'm not sure i think dr joseph uh, if he can join us can give some clarification about that marma uh, ligament injury like when when we consider this into the snayu marmas snayu marmas uh, injuries i think can be manipulated through the marma therapy tear is anatomical there is a tear in the structure so a tear needs to be surgically rectified i'm not sure if that can be done maybe a mild to moderate tear in a ligament over a period of time without surgical uh, intervention so probably with marma ther- therapy and also some uh, application some lay pass not sure uh, but i have heard people uh, getting out of these pro- uh, problems after the marma therapy and some uh, lay pass and other things but to what extent of damage can marma therapy heal and cure so that uh, shall be commented only by the expert and in, in modern science are there equivalent points in the body as marma points that surgeons use during surgery it is not like a you know I mean, surgeons do, the modern surgeons at, at least do not use uh, you know a, a, anything related to marma points in the surgery uh, but they you know usually avoid these sensitive sensitive points for example if there is an abdominal surgery and there is a section taken in the midline of the abdomen they will usually avoid umbilicus which is which is a marma point and and anatomically can these marmas be identified yes there are uh, you know there are uh, All, almost all the marmas have been identified anatomically uh, absolutely absolutely yes. yeah. uh, and you know we have covered all the marmas you know dr raghuram sir has written about all the marmas any uh, any marma you just t- go to easyayurveda.com and search for any marma you will get the anatomical composition and the un- underlying structures so. so coming to the marmas individual marmas like heart if we take heart is a marma it is categorized as sadhya pranahara marma there are different classifications of marma given in the text but one particular marma can fall under the different category i'll tell how heart or the hrudaya is a sadhya pranahara marma so acharyas have said that if this marma is injured it will cause immediate death obviously we know so we can see many conditions like this apart from the heart it may be urinary bladder and different structures which when injured can cause that almost immediately but is there a chance of survival so yes if the prana can be preserved at the right time if right time it is uh, manipulated but having said that hrudaya is a sadhya pranahara marma it can immediately take the life a bullet into the heart an injury into the heart a chest injury or bleeding inside the heart whatever can happen or a heart attack a heart failure which are massive my my cardiac uh, infarction all these things which when unnoticed can lead to sudden death so because hrudaya is or the heart is a sadhya pranahara marma and since it is located in the central portion of the body it is considered as madhya sharira gata marma so because it is located in the madhya so that is the central portion of the body apart from the limbs and the head it is considered as a madhya sharira gata marma though we know heart as a muscular structure basically we think that heart can be put into the category of mamsa marma mamsa is equal to muscle so our thought process goes to consider heart as a mamsa marma so which is a muscular marma no ayurveda has mentioned hrudaya that is heart among sira marma so that is a marma which is rich in blood vessel obvious to see that heart has many blood vessels connected to it the entire branch outs and branch ins of uh, the arteries the veins the lymphatics everything are connected to the heart structurally if we see the aorta and its branches it supply the entire body with uh, oxygenated blood and the veins the vena cava which receives the deoxygenated blood back into the heart all these blood vessels which are connected to the heart directly or indirectly why directly or indirectly because many branches join together to form bigger veins and come back to the heart arteries divide into branches veins join the tributaries of the veins join to become the bigger veins they come back to the heart arteries go away from the heart so sira is a word often compared to veins but sira is a word which has unless specified as veins it can be elaborated to cover the veins arteries also having said that hrudaya is a sira marma 
it is basically enriched with uh, the blood vessels that is why it is called as a sira marma so it is a sadyo pranahara marma it is a madhya shariragata marma so a particular marma can be many types so for example we can take uh, guda so that is uh, the anorectal region it is made up of muscles it is again called as a mamsa marma here because it is made it is a fleshy substance rich in muscles that is why it is a mamsa marma the injury of guda also can take away the life very quickly sadya pranahara marma it is present in the antaradi that is the middle portion of the body at the lower part of the abdomen that is why it is madhya shariragata marma like this we can understand different marmas their locations their description even the dimensions of each and every marma according to the anguli pramana how much they are four finger breadth or two finger breadth or one finger but so these dimensions also have been explained regarding these marmas different marmas all marmas and there was a question whether uh, the modern uh, correlation or the modern equivalents to these marmas have been explained or not absolutely to each and every marma the modern correlation has been made the structures have been identified what is composing that particular marma so that has been done as dr hebber rightly said so you can visit our uh, site search each marma by its name and read that so that you will be getting a comprehensive knowledge about that particular marma so like uh, one more example being vasti or the urinary bladder it is considered as a sadya pranahara again immediately it causes death when it is injured and it is made up of snail so because the urinary bladder is covered by the ligaments and uh, certain uh, soft tissues other than there is, there is there is also muscles the muscular layers are also there but it is enriched so the point what i want to tell friends is particular marma if it is a mamsa marma it is not only mamsa marma marma definition goes to mamsa sira snayu asti sandip sanipaka a junction what is marma let us understand it very precisely a junction it is a meeting place of mamsa that is muscle sira blood vessels snayu ligaments and tendons and the soft tissues asti bones sandhi joints there are also some dhamani marmas which are explained out of context i don't want to touch on them dhamani also means artery so these five structures where they meet so these are the five structures you can see they meet the meeting place of these marmas is called as a marma and when i mean mamsa marma mamsa is rich like 60% of mamsa or 70% of mamsa and in that mamsa marma also sira snayu asti sandhi everything is there in small portions negligible contribution when i said heart hrudaya is a sira marma 70 to 80% of the heart is a sira marma but it also has a small negligible portions of mamsa snayu asti and sandhi like this according to the mahabhuta principles pancha mahabhuta principles our bone is predominantly made up of prithvi so that is the earth element but does the bone being a hard structure it is made up of earth element but does the bone has other elements also yes it has it has water it has wind it has fire it has ether everything prithvi aap teja vayu aakasha everything is there prithvi is predominant in the bone prithvi is predominant in muscles so up or water is predominant in plasma or blood likewise in the marmas also though these are composed of all the five structures mamsa sira snayu asti sandhi one will be predominant i will connect this to the previous question which was asked why soma uh, maruta teja are explained in spite of prithvi ap teja vayu akasha being mentioned again the clarification is one or the other things will be predominant all these things are present if soma is predominant in a particular marma the teja and vayu may be in lesser proportions so here we will put soma as moon energy uh, teja as sun energy and vayu as maruta as air energy the energy forms so we'll take it as the physiological energy forms or the functional forms and the prithvi ap teja vayu akasha mahabhutas we will take it as the structural forms of energy so the functional forms of energy and the structural forms of energy so probably this is another reason which i missed out there he is an explanation why these things have been differently explained uh, dr joseph okay so there was a question so can ligament tear in the knee area be healed with marma therapy i have given my inputs you for your inputs here so the thing is that for a good ligament to heal it requires good blood circulation and nerve cycle circulation If you are able to achieve that, definitely ligament healing process will be possible. If it is getting a good nourishment, nerve circulation and blood circulation, 
it's a healing, it's a natural process. You can activate whenever there is a block, so the healing will be withheld. So mm -hmm. now we are removing the block and activating the nervous system and the blood system. So the possibility of healing is very much high. Yes, of course it is possible, sir. Along with Bandham, Varman uh, talks about Banda, how to do the Banda and all. So if you do that, we have get a good recovery also. One more question here. Karunaji asks, uh, how do the traditional Chinese medicine TCM, acupressure points correspond to the Ayurveda Marma points. So, is there any relation between acupressure and the Marma therapy? So that uh, we can put it uh, in a simple way. Sure, definitely. See, the thing is that when we uh, take the history, the Marma history is quite long than the Ayurveda. So, it's, it is being told in few uh, reference that so uh, Marma was more related, like Mar the study of Marma. It's uh, the evolution of acupuncture was uh, the study of marmam itself. So, hence uh, when I have studied the both acupuncture and marmam, so they are very closely related with the energy mm -hmm. movements and all. So, acupressure too, acupressure too, right? They are uh, like you know uh, going in the same way. Uh, marma therapy is uh, correct me if I am wrong. Marma therapy is also based on uh, application of pressure from mild, moderate, and uh, whatever extent it is needed. Okay. Yeah, of course, it's marma therapy need not be pressure itself. Marma therapy could be applied by just seeing no marma, natu marma, like you know, just by accumulation of the tongue, by just seeing, we can stimulate. So that's by why not only by touching. Without touching also, we can heal the marma points. Can you give an example, uh, Dr. Joseph? I think... Uh, our friends here on EZR Veda will be interested. Uh, no kuvarmam, so that is really interesting. By seeing, how can we uh, heal a marma? Yes, of course. See, uh, uh, we have seen that uh, manas is one of the marma, and it is mm -hmm. one not seventh marma. And if you are able to conquer that, definitely you have seen by seeing itself, you can, uh, like, you know, kill someone, you can reduce the heartbeat, you can increase the pitta, whatever you want to do. You can just by seeing, introducing the thought process, there is a system and it's very difficult to, uh, like, you know, within two days or a year, it will not be uh, taught by a teacher. But definitely it is there and I have felt and I am doing it also. We can do that. It's an art. How to see and what to see and what is the thought process is a technique all over. Have you done that, Dr. Joseph? Yes, yes, of course, of course. It's not uh, yeah. No, uh, I just wanted to know, does it need a lot of practice or any special qualities uh, to develop that nokuvarmam like over a period of time you uh, learn that process and uh, master over that or uh, a person who is healing through nokuvarmam needs to be something special like he should have that excessive this is passing on the energy right nokuvarmam also it is passing on the energy to the other person to the marma points it requires a guru who can teach you the technique it's not like you uh, keep on experiencing, like you get some idea to get the fullest of things, definitely you require a teacher and if he gives it, then only you can take it or else it's not an easy job. That's wonderful. Can Marma help uh, paralysis, help in paralysis? See, when in paralysis what happens, the energy level goes deep inside. So energy level goes deep inside. What happens? Mm -hmm. By just stimulating the skin level or deep tissue level, might not work to a greater extent. So the verbum point has to be stimulated by acupuncture needles. Then you get the beautiful results, and uh, which I have been uh, spoke about in the course also how to stimulate mm -hmm. and to get the results. And uh, Ayurveda also focuses the limitations of healing of some problems, like in the Charaka or some other Samhita, we can see Sadhya Sadhyata, like uh, the prognosis. Such and such conditions can be cured, such and such conditions cannot be cured. Uh, in Vata Vadi also, many diseases are not curable after one year or after two years. So like uh, once the time has surpassed, we cannot heal those uh, uh, things or the heal the system or the nervous system or the nervous issues. Uh, what do you tell about uh, paralysis? A patient of paralysis coming to the marma therapy, uh, what are the limitations? Uh, if the pa patient had had the paralysis for five, six years and coming to you, so Sir, is it is it easily possible or a fresh case, a new case of paralysis is easily curable through marma therapy? First thing you have to understand when the brain spasticity occurs, whenever the muscles get rigid and completely brain lost its control over the limbs, 
definitely it's a very hard job to reverse it so when uh, we have the less spasticity when it is very uh, like you know uh, early like you know in acute condition so we are able to do it and definitely marma has a limitation over uh, what you call paralysis because uh, itself when the nerve conduction goes below the level so you have to activate with uh, acupuncture needles so then only we get higher results what is what is the possibility of getting good results in chronic cases chronic case once you lost the spasticity you know it's very difficult and you have to go for like you know brain mapping technique you have to activate with the uh, like you know electrical stimulations and all then you know then only this possibility is out there so we are opening up the wide range of scopes of different types of systems of medicines where uh, how we can entangle or how we can get good results in different levels i got a nerve injury during my massage class uh, instructor pressed my orbicularis oculi with extreme pressure pain was extreme and ct scan is okay doctor has mentioned nerve injury how do i heal myself so the thing is that when we understand if when the marmons are affected we have to understand the opposite nerves like you know, edir kalai tagaval varma the opposite mm-hmm. side how we can stimulate that so by understanding that like you know i have explained in the classes where when uh, one side uh, like energy is blocked how to release that energy from the all or other side so in the same way if you understand the view, if you take the vayu from the other side and put it where the deficiency is there then it is possible to recover like uh, i want to tell if there is some uh, injury and issues uh, nerve related issues in my uh, left upper limb or left arm so mm-hmm. you need to manipulate the right left uh, right arm it's not like that mm-hmm. it depends upon uh, you have to understand when i feel there is a block and you have to go in that way like we cannot say uh, for left you have to manipulate right it's not something like that but can yeah. these can these conditions be healed like uh, deepthi suraji uh, was asking that uh, due to pressure in the massage class it was injured orbicularis uh, oculi like over the eye could and be, it is it could be corrected yes it could be corrected okay yes 100% no no problem yes. dr jasa there was another question that can marma therapy done on oneself or by himself or herself or mm. it should be done by another vaidya so uh, we can do it on ourselves like you know all the marmon points we cannot do by ourselves itself but anyhow there is a technique where how we can do for ourselves so uh, that is possible yes ah uh, one more question i want to answer here vasanta reddy ji has so the manipulation of the same heart as mamsa marma and sira marma will be different no madam here heart is sira marma only there is no question of mamsa here it is sira marma and it needs to be treated as a sira marma and considered as sira marma itself so it is not both mamsa and sira marma it is made up of muscular tissue but it has less of according to vapadeshis to boya sir it has role so some elements are in smaller uh, proportions and some elements are in greater proportions in this particular structure if heart is a marma sira is enriched like 80% of sira we have another 20% is made up of uh, mamsa uh, snayu asti and sandhi in smaller proportion or, or negligible proportions according to ayurveda so we cannot consider the heart or hrudaya as a mamsa marma it is a sira marma itself again vasanta reddy is another question uh, i can answer it partly then dr joseph can take it ahead my question is in is modern med- medicine uses physiotherapy for paralysis can marma therapy be used in conjunction with physiotherapy for acute cases of paralysis yeah. as much as i seen you know dr joseph came to us we recorded the session with the live patient here for the uh, for making the course in that uh, marma therapy is very uh, malleable and it it is like a catalyst to many other therapy uh, in the in our marma therapy course of the leg here dr joseph himself has explained how it can be uh, amalgamated or in combined with uh, uh acup- acupuncture therapy how it can be done along with say uh, dharm therapy uh, osteopathy technique etc so e- even with the physiotherapy also this marma therapy can be uh, in- incorporated together even uh, even there is uh, explanation of say oil massage along with marma therapy so com- combining all these things if in a case of paralysis do the ayurveda panchakarma first whatever is required and do the marma therapy along with uh, physiotherapy or oil massage etc oil therapies 
and then we can hope for a better result. And Dr. Joseph, anything to add, please? When you have to understand the nervous system, so you have to understand the various treatment modalities, whatever it is there in this world. So then only we get an collective idea. So when we are a when a, when we are a student, we thought, ah, oh, this treatment is everything. And when we have we grown up and we understood this limitation of it, only certain cases could be cured in this treatment. So we keep on going in search of many many treatments which could be uh, easily, uh, uh, like, you know, cure the disease. So when we get many uh, techniques, many therapies in our hand, and when we understand and maybe we we try it out to the patient. Then we get a correct proper idea and where are we and which therapies, how, what are our limitations and how to overcome it. So it's a continuous study process. We cannot say like I have learned everything. So it's in a journey. Whatever I have learned is that like keep on learning many things and implementing it. So that you will be getting a greater and greater idea and many complicated cases could be cured. So we ha I have got few of my coma patients like their people said that all doctors said that no nothing no hopes. So my one of my coma patients is working now. He's able to do all his job and definitely one of the patient over here is uh, got admitted or uh, in this hospital. My reference of a uh, another coma patient like he was like uh, fed by Ryan's tube and uh, nothing no uh, uh, action was there and now he is able to uh, eat orally. And uh, now he started to speak, and uh, movements of the legs and hands have been retrieved back. And uh, day before yesterday, one patient came, and uh, he is now getting improvement. So that's what I, I told her one software engineer, like uh, her daughter uh, is my like, you know, she had come to care of, take care of it. So I am telling you that learn many many things so that you can understand and incorporate different techniques therapies and among, among them each and every one into your practice to get a beautiful and greater result. Question on, can marma therapy be helpful with facial or hemifacial spasm, muscle spasm? There is a block in the nerves, then it causes your spasm and all. By understanding why the spasm has occurred, so where there is a block, so that thing gives you an idea that where there is a block, remove that block. So, mainly marmom, what we do is that manipulate it and remove the wire which has been entangled in one, one particular place. When it is been released, no spasm, the problem is solved. So, definitely you have to understand where is the spasm. So, a deeper understanding of diagnosis is very much important and essential in understanding which marmom points. There are many marmom points, but which marmom points we particularly help this patient. Yes, everything really is helpful. Uh, thank you there. And uh, uh, this is great. Allopaths should collaborate with Ayurvedic uh, Marma therapists. Even I would say first Ayurveda community people should uh, learn more and more about uh, such therapies. And uh, uh, with, a, with a curious mind, we should be you know incorporating uh, these therapies. Uh, as much as I understand, uh, there is huge scope within the Ayurveda community itself to incorporate uh, uh, this marma therapy more and more in their clinical practice to get more success. But Dr. Joseph, I had a question like uh, Abhyanga and marma therapy, can these be combined? If so, which one to do first? First, do the marma therapy, for example, there is a, some problem with ankle. Do the marma therapy on the ankle first and then do the oil massage or vice versa? Actually, when you do marma, it means that itself is a terrible technique. That is, itself is a massage technique where you stimulate like marmon, you understand there is a block and remove it. So it's a very easy idea. So when you know the marmon points and you stimulate it, then give a massage, the wire will go and it will get into the circulation. So definitely you can do the marmon, then give a massage. Definitely, it will be very much helpful. Thank you. And uh, there was another question that how much practice is required before someone starts marma therapy? You know, you, you learn it and you start it, or you need to be expert. How much practice is required? How long? Okay. So the thing is that, see, whenever you see uh, through a uh, video course or an online course, when you understand it and you practice it to a uh, greater number of patients you you get to know uh, like how you are getting and like you know you can just practice 
like I know the more enthusiastic like I have seen and spoke the matter of pressure how much pressure has to be applied and do not be more enthusiastic and apply more pressure causing a problem so uh, slowly slowly you study and uh, let it be gentle pressure so you can uh, go with it so whatever you can follow the instruction and you can go with it no problem so, don't be more enthusiastic. Only that much I want to tell you. Yeah, I, I have seen many people because they really are in a hurry to open up the blockage or you know to ease the you know, flow of why you are prana. They would overstimulate and uh, in in your while recording with you, your course, we learned that that itself can cause many problems. Uh, doctor, I just wanted to confirm. Like you said that. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine, the acupressure, acupuncture points are uh, directly linked to the marma uh, points in Ayurveda. In my study, I saw that like the whole uh, structure is like in Ayurveda, the whole structure is resting on the Pancha Mahabhuta, which is earth, water, air, fire, um, earth, water, fire, air, ether. But in PCM, it is completely different. It, there is wood and metal instead of I think air and ether. So, if Dr. Joseph or Dr. Raghuram can tell that is that difference. I mean, how how do we reconcile that the the foundations are different, yet the points are having like like yet the points and healing techniques are matching yeah. completely. And whatever you call wood and uh, what you call fire, okay. So earth, metal. All corresponds to Pancha Mahabhuta. In Chinese acupuncture, what they have done is that they have excluded the Akasha Mahabhuta. Rest everything is one and the same. Water is there, fire is there. So for wood, they have represented the earth. Okay. So uh, the thing is that it is one and the same. The concepts, Pancha Mahabhuta concept is one and the same in acupuncture as well as in uh, Ayurveda, Marma concept. You cannot say it's different. It's one and the same. Yes, go within it, you can get the points. You know, there will be, you know, because they, every medical science will have its own uh, point of origin and point of progress. Uh, th so, th though the underlying principle would be same, the how, how the how individual therapies progress will be entirely different even with say ayurveda how it has progressed how marma therapy has progressed occupancy chinese so on and so forth so we cannot you know we cannot take one you know few minute elements and compare each, each with the other sciences elements piece by piece point by point exactly but uh, ultimately it's all about practice and understanding both the sciences correctly and incorporating the principles in the practice so another question was like uh, how much time on an average is required by the patient to get healed with marma therapy let's assume there is no there are no oral medicines or anything given just with marma therapy say for leg injury or a simple knee joint pain for example uh, how much time it would be required for the patient to get healed see it depends on the patient to patient usually what i see in that my clinic practice is we get the instant results see whenever we we remove the block so when we remove the block vayu enters and goes into a circulation when the muscles are weak due to the nerve compression we what you call reactivate it so we uh, send the proper vayu from other direction to it so when it get regenerated so the problem is what then in there itself but the thing is that how is life energy force is very much important however you get an instant results but how long it sustains it depends upon the life energy principles within him it depends upon lifestyle its health its vital capacity its nadi bala so to increase his nadi bala we advise a proper lifestyle and also a few medicines to activate the nervous system so by which we can get a beautiful results instantly and it will be very much uh, like you know uh, by just simply giving medicine it might take a longer duration of time but it, along with the proper stimulation of marmon therapy definitely you get a beautiful results and patient uh, will have a good follow up and they have a good recovery also and there is a question that if you have questions on what dr J J joseph has mentioned in the class today and in the course how can we reach him 
uh, yeah, we will be we'll be hosting Dr. Joseph for multiple uh, sessions in future. Also, whenever uh, whenever we get sufficient questions, uh, so that we can accommodate him for one hour. It's not just that we are making courses, trying to sell it and wash our hands off. We'll be you know, holding hands and let me assure that Dr. Joseph is one of the very resourceful and also helpful helpful person and somebody has asked waiting for the course to launch course has already been launched and it is available for purchase here if you purchase today the, the course will be uh, delivered to you uh, within 24 hours so th this is a this is a link for the course there's a case here dr joseph i came across a case where a person had an auditory tumor she was operated on got better after a few days uh, but after a few days had facial palsy. The neurosurgeons said that facial palsy is due to the decompression of the nerve. Can this be treated with marama therapy or not? Yes, of course. See, it requires uh, marama therapy along with the acupuncture stimulation because, see, whenever the nerve is being compressed, see, it, what happens, there is no proper impulse. So the energy level, the conduction of electricity is going deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper. So enforced by just the stimulation, it may not work. So we have to stimulate the volume from the needle itself. So we require the help of acupuncture needle to stimulate the volume. Then only it will be helpful. The points of acupuncture puncturing with the needles that can be done on specific marmas, correct? Acupuncture and marma therapy. I mean, I know the answer, but I just wanted to hear from Joseph. Is that whenever there is deeper marma stimulation is required, or whenever there are deeper structures, deeper nerves, muscles, etc., are involved, and those stimulations are required. I have seen Joseph, Dr. Joseph, using the uh, doing the marma therapy first, and then if that is not very successful or he, if he wants more stimulation, he switches to acupuncture. Is that order correct? Yeah, yeah, you're right, sir. Absolutely right. Yeah. So m many interesting things are there. I I'm sorry, it is becoming like an advertisement for the course, but all these things uh, explained. It is not all about uh, thinking about the course and marketing the things here. So it was only to create awareness that. Where did these courses come from? Uh, Marma therapy and other things developed from. They developed from our Samhitas itself, from Sushruta's uh, explanation of Marma. The concepts were developed like if a part if uh, a serious injury with a more injury, if a Marma point can be damaged, manipulating it a gentle way and with love and affection can also heal the same Marma point. So each Marma point is susceptible to be injured and susceptible to be repaired also. That basic knowledge comes from Ayurveda, from our Samhitas, from Sushruta Samhita and our Samhitas. So from that, that is why we just thought of going ahead with this particular course because it is directly connected to Ayurveda. Small question is, uh, the word stimulation has been used here in terms of uh, Marma therapy, the Marma centers are stimulated and uh, energy is supplied, uh, supplied to the Marma areas. My other part of the question is, will we uh, require other than stimulation to suppress the Marma seeds, like suppress the Vayu action? So generally we see when we are passing on the energy, it means to tell that there is low energy. What if in the Marma places, if Vata is expressing more, there is excessive expression of Vata? like Vata, Prakopa, what we can call it as, if it is there, does the same Marma therapy help in suppressing the hyperactivity of Vata in the Marma seeds? We know that wherever Vata is exacerbated or it goes out of proportions, it tends to damage even the Marma places severely. So what are your thoughts on this? Uh... Yes, so actually, uh, rightly said, uh, Dr. Agron has told, whenever the Vayu settles in one place, what happens? It goes for a deeper destruction level. The all the tattoos that they they from day one it keep on deteriorating. So when water settles there, what happens? The space in the joint or space in that area starts becoming more and more. It becomes like osteoporotic changes that could be like uh, like you know when you can feel the greater or effusion joints. See now what happens means. What Marma is doing means there is a block. So there is a block, so only Vata is it settling down and creating a greater havoc. See, if you are able to release a volume, which has to go to some other part, like if there is a, a volume getting blocked in your knee joint, okay, it's not reaching your ankle. So you make the volume to flow to your ankle joint, 
then why what are you be happy so why you want every time keep on circulating it does not want to stay in one piece if it stays then there is a problem so it is being told that ah why you need that we are which up jayate where there is a block there is a disease so understanding there there is a block you release it that self it become that self is a treatment so you release that block it goes all over the body the problem is solved aggravation will be reduced problem is keep on reducing day by day yes that also means that stimulation and suppression is both possible through marma therapy of course definitely sir thank you thank you so nalini explains this is essentially the topic of my phd in quantum integrated medicine i am looking for better theoretical reference to the text of sage sushruta charaka and vagbata i know that about 72 of them are lethal and only four are significant does dr joseph class cover the details of each of these uh, you know we are releasing the dr joseph class uh, part by part in in the current the thing the current course that we just launched we are covering the marmas of the leg of course all all the marmas will be covered and uh, you know regarding the marma information about individual marma etc is there uh, available in easy easy are the writers i think we should end this session here thank you see you all in the next session of guru boda namaste